All right, this session is about uh, rating systems and uh, uh, we are going to look at uh, uh, a number of uh, rating systems that uh, can be used by dairy farmers. And one of it is uh, the zero grazing system, which in other words is also called the intensive uh, uh, rearing system. Uh, this is a system whereby uh, animals are held um, in a, a zero grazing unit, uh, which is uh, housed and um, designed to accommodate uh, the animals that are available on the farm. Um, it requires uh, uh, a little space and uh, farmers need to um, design a zero grazing uh, unit to accommodate uh, 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 the number of animals that are expected uh, to be raised on the herd. Uh, always uh, farmers should plan early uh, to design the uh, zero grazing system uh, uh, unit and um, a plan to uh, 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 consider all the re uh, best uh, practice uh, in uh, designing and uh, uh, putting up a uh, zero grazing unit. Uh, remember this is a place where the cow is going to stay uh, for most part of um, uh, uh, his time on the farm and therefore uh, farmers should ensure that uh, the unit is um, uh, well maintained clean and uh, free from uh, dirt and uh, uh, other uh, infection uh, 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 and disease causing uh, uh, organs. The, the unit should also be well ventilated to ensure that uh, the cows are access to free air um, and clean air. The unit should also be well designed um, to cover the animals from the adverse uh, weather uh, uh, conditions. So uh, farmers ought to um, make sure that uh, they have a proper plan and uh, to make sure that while they put the animals on zero grazing, <coughs> they make good use of um, the available land uh, to make sure that they prepare enough feeds and uh, uh, make sure that we have uh, enough uh, feeds available uh, for, for the animals and they're uh, putting in place stores to store the feeds um, and other structures that are useful uh, for the raising and uh, development of the dairy herd. Um, one of the advantages of um, the zero grazing uh, system is that it saves on space. So it is ideal for a smallholder farmer who doesn't have much land uh, to keep the animals. A well-designed uh, zero grazing unit can uh, hold uh, um, a good number of animals and bring in more returns um, uh, as compared to a farmer who uh, has not um, uh, raised the animals uh, through a proper uh, zero grazing uh, system. Um, it's also important to note that uh, the choice of this zero grazing system will help the farmer also save on costs because uh, that means you know, will not need more land to raise the animals and um, therefore uh, you can concentrate on uh, utilizing the other uh, remaining land on production of feeds and uh, other requirements. Z a zero grazing unit also helps in management of the animals, especially when you want to monitor them. Uh, you can um, easily access them at any time and uh, look at them and observe how they are uh, 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 behaving and uh, if there's anything that you need to um, uh, note it's easily uh, done when they are, uh, the animals are close together and you can um, monitor that at a very close range. Uh, we also have the semi-zero grazing system which we also call the semi-intensive uh, system uh, which is also uh, recommended for smallholder farmers who don't have uh, much land. This is where animals um, partially uh, left to graze and also uh, left to be housed uh, in a zero grazing unit. Um, this is uh, one of the best systems because it helps the animals to um, uh, also have the opportunity to uh, graze and also uh, move up freely uh, around the available land at the same time uh, being held in the, uh, in the unit uh, to uh, be closely monitored and also to, to be sheltered there. Um, the other one is open grazing or the extensive system. 
which uh, actually is set up to have all the animals uh, left to graze freely and to move within the available parcels of land uh, to look for food. Um, during uh, the time the animals on the farm, it is important that the farmer considers um, uh, a proper structure of uh, creating paddocks to ensure that the animals are fed uh, with enough feeds and paddocking also enables uh, movement of animals uh, from one paddock to another to access uh, the right feeds at the, at the required time. Uh, with this kind of uh, rearing system, the farmer ought to have enough uh, parcels of land for both growing the feeds and for growing the pastures. This will uh, help the farmer uh, make sure that they provide adequate and enough feeds to the animals. Um, one of the other issues to be looked at when keeping your animals in an extensive unit, uh, uh, in an extensive system, is to make sure that um, the free range and the free uh, grazing does not um, uh, uh, prevent you from closely monitoring the, the cows. At times it may be hard to closely monitor the cows, but the farmer has to be uh, very keen. And that's why they need to keep their animals in paddocks to closely monitor uh, which animals in which paddock need attention. Uh, in most cases, without proper feeding and without proper care, the extensive system may affect the production of the, uh, of the cows. And that is why farmers ought to be very careful in, uh, in letting out the animals uh, to feed uh, uh, through the open grazing. And also uh, be careful with those animals that um, uh, are pregnant and are due to calf. They should not be allowed to uh, graze over large fields because that will also affect uh, the, the body and uh, uh, the growth of the, of the calf. And again, it may also lead to abortions. So farmers ought to put up a, a proper plan to separate the animals at the right time uh, whenever they, they, they are having an extensive system uh, on the farm. Uh, some of the challenges with um, uh, zero grazing uh, uh, systems um, for smallholder farmers is, uh, at times is um, uh, the lack of capital to uh, put up structures that uh, um, are really ideal for, for, for a standard uh, zero uh, grazing system. Um, uh, but uh, with starting that, we also have other uh, challenges whereby the animals uh, may feel so strained within um, a single uh, shelter or, or, or unit. And um, this may mostly affect uh, those animals that are pregnant and those animals that um, need to exercise uh, as part of uh, uh, management of, of animals that uh, need to, uh, to give uh, uh, birth uh, to, to calves. So uh, one of the disadvantages is uh, uh, the straining of the animals and the animals may be put under a lot of stress um, uh, when they are close together uh, in a shed without even access uh, to um, uh, the sun and um, also be able to exercise and move freely within the, uh, the, the farm. Um, challenges also with the uh, semi-zero grazing, um, I think a little bit uh, on the management of the animals and how the farmers need to uh, closely monitor the animals. Uh, the challenges are first under zero grazing are reduced uh, when the farmer is uh, using a semi-zero grazing unit and this is what uh, most farmers would um, use because it balances between uh, the pros and the, and the cons of having animals uh, 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 sh uh, completely and uh, kept under zero grazing unit for uh, uh, full time and uh, balancing also with the animals uh, being uh, uh, raised in a, an open uh, unit, I mean an open uh, grazing system. Um, I've already mentioned the, some of the challenges that come with the open uh, 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 grazing system. That means uh, if the animals are not well monitored and closely uh, monitored, the production may be uh, reduced and um, uh, because farmer may not really know the quantities of uh, feeds that the, the cows are being uh, fed on. 
and again it requires uh, large parcels of land and it may be costly which uh, may require uh, huge resources also to maintain that uh, kind of uh, 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 grazing system. Thank you.